The 20th century dawns, and America holds a prominent place on the world stage for the first time. President William McKinley is re-elected to a second term, and aspiring trust buster Theodore Roosevelt is installed as vice president. With McKinley in office for another four years, John Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan have the freedom to expand their empires to unprecedented heights. In September of 1901, President McKinley travels to Buffalo to give a speech heralding America's prosperity. Eight days after the shooting, William McKinley succumbs to his injuries, becoming the third American president to be killed in office. Teddy Roosevelt is about to become the leader of the free world. Roosevelt insisted that the big capitalists recognize that they were mere capitalists and that the elected officials of the country were the ones that the people had chosen. Roosevelt quickly launches a campaign against the nation's largest trusts. And his first target is a railroad conglomerate owned by J.P. Morgan. Morgan demanded to see the president, so he stormed down from New York to Washington, went into the White House, and he said, I don't understand. He said, if we've got a problem, send your man to my man and they'll fix it up. And Roosevelt said, this is exactly the problem with Morgan. He acts as though I'm just a rival boss or something. And Morgan, who thought that he could manipulate Roosevelt, discovered that Roosevelt could not be manipulated at all. Roosevelt refuses to back down from Morgan. He sues his company in federal court, the first government antitrust case filed against a major corporation. Roosevelt goes on to win, and Morgan's railroad monopoly is broken up. It's a stunning setback for J.P. Morgan, one he'll agonize over for years. And it's a sign of things to come for his fellow titans. Roosevelt is elected to a second term, and over the course of his administration, he files suit against dozens of trusts. It's a time of great change for the nation. As the nation heads deeper into the 20th century, the country is united with a robust economy that benefits not just the rich, but everyone. It's the beginning of one of the longest periods of prosperity America will ever see. <laughs> 